welcome back today we will talk about history class 7 ncert pattern chapter 1 chapter 1 for history tracing changes through thousand years tracing changes through thousand years so what do we why do we say thousand years in this session we will be talking about what happened between 700 and 1750 a period of approximately thousand years this in some form we call as a medieval history what is ancient history ancient history is what we studied as a harappan mohenjo-daro civilization extra in the previous class this year we will study for about what happened in history for about 1000 years 700 to 1750 something called a medieval history what is modern history modern history is what up happened from 1750 to till date that is from the time the european travelers came to indian subcontinent and started colonizing so this is history of india tracing changes through thousand years chapter 1 one of the ways in which we could know about the past is through the map in the earlier classes we have studied we came to know about seals in the mohenjo-daro harappan civilization we came to know about a different things that happened through coins like that we can also study about history about our past from the map what is a map map is picture of a place or a city or a country or a continent is a map so the map helped people to know what is where the europeans came to know existence of something called india or a columbus was trying to reach india and he reached america because the indicative map of those days used to tell people what is where and then it gave a guide as to where to go whether they should go do to india if they want spices or they should go to some other place if they want something else and how to go it used to tell the route if you are in europe and if you have to come to india you have to go to the south of africa and then take a u turn and then you have to come so it used to give ideas how to go these were the ways in which maps were helpful for the people of olden days that is why today we use the maps of olden days to study about the history of india there was a great person called al idrisi he was from arabian peninsula and he was a geographer what al idrisi did is he traveled to various places and as you know in those days people used to travel mostly by ship when they have to go to far off places he traveled and based on his experience about the indian subcontinent the indian peninsula the sri lanka island and things like that he drew a map so this is one of the oldest maps of the indian subcontinent that we got which was drawn by al idrisi in some time around 1154 ce is what common era so around 1154 al idrisi drew a map about drew a map about indian subcontinent drew a map about indian peninsula drew a map about um, sri lanka it was around 1154 ce what is special about this map in those days based on the information that he had he drew a map and which did not have a specific notation or a legend as to what is the north so based on that map sri lanka and the peninsula of india used to be on the top the himalayas or the northern india used to be on the south so that is the way the map was we cannot call it as a mistake or an error because based on the information available at that point in time that was the best possible map possible about the indian continent available for the people of that time then later in 1720 we have got a map from french cartographer atlas novio from the gulum de isle so atlas novio french cartographer's map of 1720 was more detailed it has information about different places on the india the subcontinent the peninsula it also has more detailed information about the coastal areas the information available on the map of 1720 is more detailed what does it say between 1154 and 1720 during that 600 700 years lot of thing has changed in the world the information the knowledge the technology everything has changed and so this map had become more detailed it had even indications of various rivers and the gulfs the place called kanoj was written with a spelling q in the map of 1720 there is a difference in the detail between these two maps so this tells us how map evolved how information about india evolved how information about various places on the indian subcontinent was known to 
different people of maybe the French cartographer or the Arab geographer. Cartographer means one who draws map. Geographer is one who studies geography. What is the context? Context is important for an historian to study the history. Historians read the documents, maps and texts from the past. But you have to read in the context. Reading Alidri Si's map, you should not say, no, no, Sri Lanka is in the north of India. You have to read the context in which that map was drawn. One has to be sensitive to the historical background, the different historical background in different time period. The information about India available to an Arab person may not be same as the information available to an European, may not be same as an information arrived to a Native American or an Australian. So we have to be sensitive to the differences in historical context. And then the difference in science, the difference in technology, difference in the ability to measure and draw a map, difference in the ability to understand physically when I travel from Kanyakumari to Delhi and then if I have to draw a map, how do I make it into a scale which is acceptable. So all that science, the information differs across time, across geographies. So that historians has to keep in mind when they try to interpret history based on what they have read from the document or a map or a text. Terminology is also changed. What is the changes in terminology? The language, the grammar, the vocabulary, the meanings of the word change over time. Same word has a different meaning at different points in time. Now take the word Hindustan. The word Hindustan is there in vocabulary for a, so many years in India. It had a different meanings at different point in time or the word was used to indicate different things in different point in time by different persons. The terminology when we study, we also need to know the medieval Persian language or the Urdu language and the modern Persian or Urdu is different. The vocabulary has changed or the meanings have changed. So there are records for so many languages. There are records for meanings of the words in so many languages and there are no records for the language or for the word or for the differences in meaning. This is also one issue that the historians need to remember as to understanding the terminology with respect to the context when learning history. So going back to the word Hindustan, it meant large areas of land or it covered Punjab, Haryana, etc. or it covered the land between Ganga and Yamuna when during the Minhaj I. Siraj, the chronicler, when he wrote in Persian, that is the meaning that he had in mind. Minhaj I. Siraj was a chronicler. Chronicler is the one who writes down or notes down the events and writes a chronological event. What happened after this? What happened after this? Where it happened? How it happened? That is a record keeper is called a chronicler. A old historian based, based on not intending to write history, but just recording what is happening at present at that person's point in time. So Minaji Siraj wrote uh, something in Persian on that he used the word Hindustan and there he meant areas between Ganga and Yamuna. Today when you say Hindustan, you refer to mostly the Indian subcontinent, the Republic of India. So there is a vast difference between the same word having different meaning, different intention. Now there were lands that were part of the dominions of the Sultanate of Delhi. So during the Mughal period, the word Hindustan was used to cover all the portion that were ruled by the Delhi Sultan. The regions that were dominions of the Sultanate of Delhi, that was what was called as Hindustan by the people during the Mughal period. So Hindustan during Minaj Isra's time, Hindustan during the Mughal period is different from today's Hindustan. And at no point in time Hindustan mentioned the Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra areas. That is the southern India. Why they did not mention southern India? Because these were neither part of the Sultanate of Delhi, nor were the lying between Ganga and Yamuna, nor were the part of the Punjab Haryana belt. So that is the way it is. Now, during British period, it was a different India. During British period, India, Afghanistan to Sri Lanka to Bangladesh to Pakistan, everything was under British India. This was not the Hindustan of the Mughal period. This was not the Hindustan of the Persian Chronicles. Now, Baba, when Baba said Hindustan, that is the Mughal Emperor Baba, he referred to the culture and inhabitants of the people of the subcontinent. So, Babar, when he said something is Hindustani, he referred to the culture, the music of the people, the dance of the people, the flora and fauna of the people, the inhabitants of the Hindustan subcontinent. That is what Babar meant. So, the word Hindustan had different meanings in 
different context, different season, and different language were used by different people in history. Okay, the nomenclature. The idea of a geographical cultural entity like India did not exist. Now, after independence that India got from the British rule in 1947, we have something called the Republic of India. During British period, we had Pakistan, Bangladesh also as a part of India. Before that, India meant certain portions ruled by the Mughal emperors, did not mean the southern portion of the India. But Hindustan word did not carry any of this political or the national meaning. It had different meaning. Babur talked about the fauna or the flora or the culture of the inhabitants. The Persian chronicler talked about the area between the Ganga and Yamuna. The Mughal Delhi Sultanate spoke about whatever regions were under the dominions of the Sultanate. So the nomenclature differed. So the word foreigner, the foreigner word, today we use Pardesi or Ajanabi and the meaning of the word Pardesi or Ajanabi today or the word Mujahideen today is not same as what it was 100 years ago or 500 years ago or 1000 years ago. Because earlier the word foreigner was used for something or someone from a different national and what was a nation? The Chera Chola Pandya Empire could call themselves as one nation and then what was alien to them was called a Pardesi. Earlier it meant a stranger, not from one's own society, not from one's own class or culture, not from one's own village. A person from a different village could be a Pardesi, a town dweller and a city dweller can, can call each other as a Pardesi, a forest dwellers can call the civilization dwellers as Pardesi. But a different caste or a different class does not make him a Pardesi if you are from a different village. So that is how the foreigner word used to be used in those days. So we have to be careful about the terms used because they have a different meaning in the biosphere. What's a biosphere? Where the plants and animals coexist. Now what are the sources of information? Historians use different types of sources to learn about the past. It depends on what period you want to study. If you want to study about Stone Age, you cannot use a palm leaf manuscript. And then the nature of investigation. What is it that they are trying to study? Depending on that, historians used to go for different sources for getting the information. Sometimes they rely on coins and inscriptions, sometimes on architecture, sometimes on textual records, sometimes the engravings on the rock, sometimes what is written on the tablet and stored. So, Sometimes the historians are forced to guess what is written, what is intended. So many scripts we are not deciphered. Sometimes what we get about the Indian history is in Prakrit. Sometimes it is in Sanskrit. Sometimes it is in Brahmi script. Sometimes it is in Persian language. Then there are small changes that happen to the languages. On the top of it, when people started to use scribe for keeping copies of this record, Scribes used to work in maybe say paper or maybe in palm script. They used to change one word or change one spelling or change one sentence here and there. So every word or alphabet they change, every sentence they change could give a different meaning. Sometimes it could be intentional. We don't know. We don't meet the scribe now to ask him. Sometimes it would be unintentional. Sometimes it could be error, inadvertent. So a small change here, a small word there can alter the sentence in various copies. So the historians have to read all the things together. On the top of it, different people had different handwritings. And then there were different fonts in use. So nastalic is cursive. Sikshate is dense. So different handwriting will have a different difficulties in understanding about the past. Because we don't live in that time, we will not have capacity to understand, read and translate something written in the past in the same way that they intended to convey by writing that. Now we said we will talk about the years 700 to 1750 only to consider as a medieval period or a thousand years. The period before is called ancient Indian history and period after is called modern Indian history. Now during this period we have a large number and variety of textual record. Why we have a large number and large variety of textual record? Because writing was easier. Instead of manuscript, we had paper. Earlier, we used to um, remove what is written on that paper and write it again. Wash the paper off the manuscript. Now, we don't have to wash the paper during this period. In some places, printing press was almost getting developed or introduced. And then, this is a recent period. It is not the ancient period. So, the records are 
reasonably available and because of the development of civilization because of the trade because of the so many kings and queens which is not the same case in the harappan period people started keeping a record for various purposes maybe for tax collection maybe for knowing maybe to show off that is eulogies were written in favor of kings to say you were so great you had won so many wars so scribes were there who were copying and keeping and when when kingdoms got split or annexed then the records were copied and rewritten and kept there and then people were writing holy text and then many temples and mosques and churches came up so records were kept in the monasteries and then not only economic record of taxes there were records of the judicial proceedings also who were punished for whom what was the law who is supposed to follow that and all sometimes instead of writing the whole story miniature paintings were there in the manuscript that is to illustrate one picture can talk 100 words so sometimes what happened is people just extracted that miniature and sold off that also happened later what is archive archive is a place where old records are stored maybe records on paper maybe records on manuscript maybe something else archive is a place where old records are stored manuscripts were collected by wealthy people rulers monasteries and temples so those collections those libraries of the monasteries and the kings became the archives later for the modern government it is a library of the record of the past where manuscripts and records are kept historians read all the available versions to guess the intention of the original author why because it though it is recent different scribes wrote in different things and then records were kept in different copies in different places by different rulers or different monasteries and then there is a changes in the cursive handwriting or a dense handwriting and then some change in small word here or a sentence there could alter so historian had to read all the archive available now zianuddin varoni he wrote a chronicle in 1536 chronicle is just record of the happenings that you came to know then he wrote another chronicle in 1358 now what had happened is for so many years people never knew the existence of the first chronicle first version was not known till 1960 so till 1960 people read about 1358 chronicle and believed that is what is the fact but there is a wide difference between first and second version so what he wrote in 1356 is based on his information available at that point in time and he had changed a lot in 1358 version because between 56 and 58 zionidan baroni got access to so much information about the past and so he changed and adapted and adopted and because of the update he made we have a different information in 1358 compared to what he had in chronicles of 1356 now why changes happen why people have to have a need to revise or update their version of the story that is mostly because of so many things that happened or technological innovation we can say or the development in the civilization the improvement in the standards of living the changes in the quality of life how all this happened because of the innovation what is innovation persian wheel persian wheel helped irrigation where water could be taken from the well without much energy it can be passed on to the fields across that's a persian wheel in irrigation next is a spinning wheel spinning wheel helped in weaving fiber to fabric to cloth to yarn to making clothes so spinning wheel was a great innovation from the clothing perspective persian wheel helped in food clothing firearms firearms in combat was an innovation because during this year different uh, kings or maharajas or people got access to firearms because of which they were able to win a war because of the firearms so many people lost life so the way of life the fear of life the fear of war the way the war was fought all that changed and because of these changes there were upheavals changes widespread change in the social cultural political and economic life of the people in this period 700 to 1750 what other change happened the travelers when they were coming to subcontinent india from different parts of the world they also brought new food so they brought seeds of potatoes or corns or chilies this food was unknown to india before 1700 they also brought tea and coffee a plantation crop now a lot of tea or coffee is exported from india to the world but before 700 we never had this tea or coffee so because of the changes in economics politics social cultural behavior of the people during this period because travel was possible because of the persian wheel or spinning wheel or firearms the lifestyle changed it became very difficult 
to study the history of the spirit because of the fast changes varied changes multiple changes the study has become a huge challenge why because of the scale of the development the variety of the developments because of the mobility people more people were able to come and go so more people came from different places they brought in more information they brought in more change and these new ideas were adopted and because of the new ideas the existing society or community underwent a lot of change and so studying history became difficult because the history changed very frequently very fast very widely and earlier people were not coming to indian subcontinent or going back so quickly now because of the capability of the travel or transportation development people were coming and going and every time people went back they told stories about india the wealth of india the spices story the silk story and other stories and so new people came everybody wanted to carve a fortune they were craving for making big so different people from different parts of the world started coming to india and so when more frequently more people started coming from more different parts of the world the changes that happened to the indian society and the indian community also underwent lot of changes and so today the study of history for the period 700 to 1750 is difficult because of the widespread changes because of the developments that happened especially because of the more people coming and bringing in more ideas now what happened within the country the region in appear the cholas the tughlaqs the moguls they all had very large regions under their control so when people were having large areas under their control the kings became maharajas emperors so when they wanted to have showing of of the more power prasasti were sung about them the eulogies about your great so one prasasti of the delhi sultan balban says that he was ruler of the vast empire may or may not be true but when you up give praises to a person you say you are a ruler of a vast empire so even if not very vast empire it may be 1 by 1000 of what is said there should be true because without smoke there is no fire so even if you had a grain they will talk about a big thing so they talk that the balban's empire stretched from bengal to ghazni or afghanistan we call him ghazni because he was a mohammed ghazni who came from afghanistan and it included all of south india dravida so that is the praise that somebody sang about balban balban ruled in 1266 1267 period so if somebody is praising balban that he ruled that means from that prasasti we can say praising was common recording of his capabilities of his extent of the empire was common and this empire stretched from bengal to afghanistan and till dravida in the south so all this we could know from that prasasti so this is one information as to how wide or how far reaching was your region how big was your empire that information is available for the historians to study also during that period the knowledge of sanskrit so many brahmanas were the ones who were able to learn memorize and recite the sanskrit vedas and puranas and things like that and because of their knowledge of sanskrit the people who were wealthy the rulers the powerful the political and economically powerful people used to patronize the brahmanas and so brahmanas used to got get a lot of influence or power in the society so earlier society had four varnas as you know brahmana kshatriya shudra vaishya and all vaishyas were the trading people and shudras were other common workers now other than the four varnas that the people in india were following because of the economic political changes because of the people had more money from agriculture and so they started venturing into other skills or became artisans that is pottery or carpentry or blacksmen or weaver etc and because there was no more barter and everybody had lot of money and then common exchange and coins were there certain tribes or certain people doing certain skills or certain type of work started becoming more better off socially and economically so people started to form groups now society became differentiated because of the capabilities people were grouped on basis of sub caste what is sub caste people who are doing pottery people who are doing uh, blacksmith work people who are doing goldsmith work people who are doing uh, knitting or weaving and then 
this subcast or the group of people who are doing a particular type of work were ranked on basis of the background and their occupation what work they did which group they belong to how much money the group had how much influence the group had these rank influence the power the resources that they could control and the resources that they already controlled what is resources productive asset one is in the form of gold that you have stock at home another is how much land you had another is how much tax you are paying to the government and so how much influence you have politically so all this is the resources so these were called as jati so this subcaste is jati the society that is differentiated into groups based on the their background and their work is called jati the status of the same jati could be different in different areas in different Uh, kingdoms or different regions so a particular place blacksmith jati may be ranking high in a particular place the teacher jati could be higher scale in a particular place the agricultural jati could be on a higher place so the jati was based on background and occupation and their influence and their ranking was based on what much power they had or influence they had based on the money they had the taxes they paid and their necessity in the society the rank could go up and down their status could be different in different region and this is how people in the society were getting differentiated during this medieval period now again this jatis were formed people in the jati were technically they were only workers guild the type of thing based on the occupation and the background only this happened and so they framed their own rules their own regulations how they conduct among themselves within the jati but then peoples of different jati lived together coexisted without fighting with each other within the same village there was a different head for the village called the chieftain so villagers were controlled by the village head and jatis were controlled by the jati head and there were multiple jatis on the same village everybody worked together and mutually there was a business happening between them without one jati other could not survive because you need goldsmith you need blacksmith you need um, different artisans and things like that so jatis were helping people to group themselves and be differentiated and ranked based on their backgrounds and they had their own rules and regulations now what is prasasti prasasti is not necessarily an exaggerated claim of conquest it is something a prose or a poetry written in appreciation of somebody it claims that the person had so many riches or so many victories or so many control over different parts of the world or he had one different kings or subdued different kings now apparently based on this prasasti so many people are afraid of this particular maharaja so maybe there is no need for war maybe they become friendly maybe become economical and political times become easy that is also maybe one reason why the prasasti was published far and wide now <clears throat> different languages were used during this period now how do you know there were different languages it is not sanskrit or prakrit only we know this from amir khusro's poetry in amir khusro's poetry he is saying sindhi lahori kashmiri telangani gujari mabari and all were spoken now mabari can be malabari can be marathi now today in southern part of india you have four or five distinct languages the andhra telugu the karnataka kannada the kerala malayalam or tamil of the tamil nadu now these languages were there for a long period but they were not very popular or very well known or everybody did not know about it in bengal today what we speak is called bengali the bengali spoken in bengal and the bengali spoken in uh, the old eastern bengal today's bangladesh is little different now hindi is spoken today but earlier it was not called as hindi it did not have a script that is why today we call it as a devanagari script before that it was called hindavi it was called so different languages used to exist in those period different languages exist today some are same some are different the script has changed the syllables has changed the words have changed the pronunciation has changed the some, the way it is used is changed the regions in which it is spoken also changed a bit now individuality was coming into existence in the later part of the medieval medieval world medieval century medieval period now what is individuality 
the regions already processed different geographical year marking they had a dimension they had a characteristic cultural characteristic they also have some sort of a language and many languages did not have a written version it was only verbally spoken many times the region which had a specific cultural identity or a language identity or a geographical dimension were associated with a specific ruling dynasty or a ruler or a king that is why we call as a gupta dynasty for example now sometimes the empires were span regional sometimes they were not having diverse regions so sometimes you may have a empire which had a portions of uh, say today is kerala karnataka andhra and tamil nadu and sometimes you may have a region which does not have areas of this different areas but will have only area of today's maharashtra small area of today's maharashtra maybe so some empires were pan regional some were panning different regions some were not and these empires had different geographical dimensions or maybe have a languages of their own have maybe have cultural characteristics of their own and then based on which dynasty is ruling they had their own individual characteristics now there were periods of imperial rule there were periods of pan regional rule and there were periods where small small kings ruled small small areas now this characteristic of the empire or the kingdom or the chiefdom or the region had distinct as well as shared traditions now what was happening in one country in those days one kingdom and and another kingdom some things were common so we call it as a shared tradition something were distinct in each kingdom so we call it as a distinct tradition so that is why these jatis used to exist probably in many kingdoms and they had some similar characteristic and some different characteristic now it was very difficult to have an integration by the imperial kings of the whole of india without losing the distinctiveness the southern india had different characteristic the middle portion of the india the plateaus had a different characteristic the northern india the plains of ganga yamuna had a different characteristic so it was difficult for different imperial rulers including the mogal dynasty including the delhi sultanate to integrate into one country without losing the distinctiveness why because there was more of distinctiveness and less of shared traditions in those periods among the different regions different kingdoms now that was a came islam also came into india how islam came islam came from the arab wanderers or arab travelers or arab explorers who came from the arab world brought islam with them the merchants the migrants so they brought the teachings of the holy quran though they brought the teachings of the holy quran and there is only one quran and one islam in the world the teachings of the prophet muhammad were interpreted in different form by the different kingdoms in india because different travelers came and taught different people here so when it was interpreted differently the shia muslims in india believe the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the legitimate leader after prophet muhammad prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a legitimate leader who said this shia muslims believed so now there is something called the sunni muslims what they believe the other sect believed the authority of the elders the khalifas what khalifa says is right not necessary we should follow the son in law of the prophet we should be following the khalifas because they are the early leaders this is what the sunni muslims believed so shia and sunni there were two sects in india is ccp groups then there were different schools of law of the sharia law hanafi school of law or shafi school of law there were different schools of law and there were different theology or mystic traditions if you go deep you will find that the sufi sufi some yes you if i sufi started the indian subcontinent so though islam came from the travelers and merchants of the arab world into the indian subcontinent between the 1700 to 1750 period the indians the different kingdoms in india the different people in india adopted islam in different ways we have two major sect called shia and sunni we have two different schools of thought called hanafi and shafi and then the theological tradition of sufism started to gain ground in indian subcontinent now different belief systems had ability to grow in the wide country because of the different patterns the wealthy individuals and nobility were 
giving patronage to what to religion only for religion no they were giving patronage to architecture by building different temples art and craft they were the bharatanatyam or the kathak or the mohini atam because the art form the dance form came up because there were patterns to patronize that craft literature people were the prasasti unless you give gold coins to the people who sing in praise of you the literature will not survive likewise the religion people were building temples for different deities of their own liking what is a new and old religion religion is supernatural it is an agency where we believe there is somebody called god we are somebody called humans and in between there has to be somebody called priest or a prophet who will help us to cross the problem of life and enter into a divine's world or heaven so that is why we call it as an agency so religion is something supernatural something beyond what we can see in the nature beyond the air though we call air water and mountains and oceans and all as gods and goddesses it is something beyond that it is something closely connected with the way we organize our lives sometimes religion is connected with our social and economic lifestyle so belief in divine was deeply personal in good old days belief in divine was deeply personal in good old days what you believe in your religious belief was different from how you used to interact on a social or economic plane with other people you may be trading something with somebody whose religious beliefs were totally different and far away from what your personal beliefs are and then though there was a deity worship it used to be mostly a personal deity worship so earlier days religion was closely related to socio economic organization maybe depending on your jati maybe it is deeply personal and then it was collective the whole group was called hindu and then inside your mind you may not have may or may not have a hindu god so in your deep in your mind you may have a hindu god as a personal deity but collectively you may not be looking at that particular deity for favors so there was worship of favors there was a personal god or goddess mostly religion was personal in your daily life sometimes it was collective you go together and then have a satsang or a prayer at the mosque juma etc and then royalty used to spend a lot of tax money on constructing temples and so when temples grew the brahmanas their importance grew because they were the ones who knew sanskrit the puranas the epics the mantras the vedas so when temples grew the brahmanas grew and then later there was emergence of the idea of bhakti what is emergence of idea of bhakti you don't need a temple you don't need a common religion you don't need to have a collective worship it can be deeply purely personal means what you will have a personal deity you don't need an intermediary priest to, to tell your prayer to the god bhakti is a loving friendly personal deity bhakti movement means loving friendly personal deity you will have so in bhakti movement what happened then the andal of the southern part of india or the meera how she used to consider krishna as her friend as her lover as her husband as her everything so that is called the bhakti movement you don't need a priest you don't need a temple you don't need any frills you have a personal relationship one to one with your loving god that was encouraged by the bhakti movement of those times so that is how religion also changed over a period now <clears throat> the time period reflects the changes in the social or economic organization the 16th and 18th century were different from the 17th century why because lots of changes happened because of the people came the intermingling of the ideas happened the technology changed the 11th century is different from the 8th century why the people in the 8th century did not have enough information or technical tools to make their lives better the people in 11th century had more the man learnt more about the ways and means of controlling the environment utilizing the environment exploring the environment exploiting the environment to make his life better so today we call it as a modern environment modern period of the indian history modernity carries a sense of material progress intellectual advancement so from ancient to medieval medieval to modern when we moved there was intellectual advancement there was material progress that means different economic or better economic situation 
So ancient period is 6000 to 650, medieval period is 700 to 1750, after 1750 is the modern period. What is modern period? The extra continental expansion, the colonization, the Europeans coming and taking over major parts of Asia. From that period onwards, whatever happened is called the modern period for us. So in the medieval period, the main things are people became wealthy, individuals became wealthy, the chieftains, the tax collectors, the zamindars, people who had access to the productive assets. Then they were supporting art and craft, the spread of the peasant societies, then they started artisans and they started doing other occupations. So because of the occupation, Jati came up. When occupation has to be done for uh, people started leaving settled life for more people, when population explosion happened, then industries and factories started coming up. The difficulties of pastoral lives were slowly coming down. There were less and less number of forest people because forests were cut and made into cities and towns. There was development of religions like Hinduism or Islam. Then Europeans started coming based on the new maps and new information and new interest on the riches of the country in the form of maybe gold, in the form of maybe cotton, in the form of raw materials for iron, maybe spices, so many things. So this different time period of medieval or modern or ancient history reflects the change in the social and economic organization. How much intelligence or a technical know-how we had, how much knowledge of science the people had, how much economic progress or material progress we have made. So the persistence of the ideas, whether new ideas gave way to the world or the world continues, or the transformation, ideas were amended and adjusted to suit the new environment. If you look at Islam or Christianity in India, it is not exactly same as what the Pope is doing in, or what the Islam is today followed in Makkah and Madinah. The differences are because the small changes were made based on the Indian culture, Indian society, Indian environment. And so that is what we call as a transformation that happened. The ideas were transported from one place to another and that information made changes to the ideas existing here. And so the belief systems were diluted, adapted and adopted to the new environment. That is what is a causing the changes to the lifestyle over different periods of time. The past is normally divided into three periods. The process of shared characteristics. The medieval period had some characteristic, modern period had the same characteristic, ancient period have the same characteristic. That is why shared characteristics, the process were divided. British used to divide India into Hindu period, Muslim period and British period. Hindu period is where only Hinduism was there. Muslim period is where when the, the Delhi Sultanate or a Mughal Empire was established and then the British period when the British started ruling India. So this is the way they divide the history to study. But then better to study based on the shared characteristics instead of these things. Why? Because there were, as we have seen in the previous thing, some things were shared and some things were not. They, they, there were distinct traditions there as well as there were shared traditions. Now that integration is not easy. That is why it is better to study the significant developments in the economy, the society, the culture. To appreciate, understand and study the diversity of the varied regions of India. Only then it will be easier to understand the differences that happen in the various time periods in India. We have to look at economic and social factors and the changes that happened there, not just uh, divide it into these three types and learn. But this was easy to learn because the British historians, when they came to India, the, after the period they came, they study as a British period and the Pulo period they study. They had a Muslim period when the Delhi Sultanate was there, the Babar, Akbar, Humayun and all were there. And it, it is from that Mughal dynasty only the Britishers took over the control of India. So they studied the Muslim period and the period before that as a Hindu period. Now, the society in India, if you look at the Harappan or the ancient civilization types and from today, it evolved from hunter-gatherer to the farmer, to the people living in town, to creation of villages or settlements and then there came the kingdoms and empires. So that is how the society evolved, the history evolved and that is why when we study history, we come to know what all happened, how we evolved from what we were to what we are today. Thanks for watching this video on tracking changes through thousand years. What is tracking? Tracking is tracing or looking back or looking at. In a tissue paper, we track or trace the image. So 
looking to understand the history of India from the medieval period, from the ancient period to what happened during this period, what kingdoms were there, how we people were living, what innovations happened, how Jatis were formed, how Islam was transforming India and it, how it was adapted by Indian in different belief systems and things like that. Thanks for watching this video. Please keep coming back. Goodbye.